I might go like this. Okay, guys. In this lesson, we are going to learn about everybody's favorite concept. Long division. Yay! I know, you hate it. It's okay. It's okay. It's going to be fine. It's going to get through this. Here we go. All right, the first thing we're going to focus on is what we call standard algorithm. And the standard algorithm um, is what your parents, standard, your parents learned um, when they were in school and how to divide. So when you come home and you say, I learned how to do long division, and you show them the area model or the partial quotient method, they're going to say, that isn't how I learned it. And you're learning that new math. Okay. Um, which is kind of sort of true. But we're going to go over standard algorithm first. Um, and you will see in the Google slide presentation, they go through a thing that says daddy, mommy, sister, brother, um, Rex. And then uh, Coco for check. Okay. What I usually go... For my students to try to help them remember is does McDonald's sell cheese burgers okay and then does is going to be divide McDonald's is multiply sell is going to be subtract cheeseburgers is check and then burgers is bring down okay um, so if you need to use an acronym or a saying to remember, you can do that. Does McDonald's sell cheeseburgers? I like food, so I usually use food. Um, but you can look at the other um, saying in the notes in the Google slide. So I'm just going to go through a few examples of what, how we're going to do long division here in sixth grade with the standard algorithm. So, for example... Okay, so let's start with an example. I'm going to start with um, an easy one. I'll go 545 divided by 5. And so how we start with this is we're going to look at 5 and the first 5 and 545. And we're going to say, will 5 go into 5? And the answer there is yes. So 1 times 5 is 5. I'm going to subtract. So there's my multiplication part. Um, I get zero, I'm going to bring down this four. Then I say, uh, is four, will five go into four? The answer to that is no, it won't. So I don't just do nothing, I need to put a zero there. It goes in zero times. Zero times five is zero. I subtract, I get four. I'm going to check, is four smaller than five? Yes, I can keep going. This five needs to come down. Does 5 go into 45? Yes. 9 times. 9 times 5 is 45. Subtract. I get 0. I'm done. Okay, so that was a pretty simple one. Um, probably started those back in maybe, uh, I don't know, 4th grade-ish or so. Um, so we're going to take it up a, a notch here. So let's do another one. So the next one I'm going to give you is 3,000 469 divided by 19. Okay, so what we have to do here now is we kind of have to do um, a little bit of number sense. So what you're going to look at is you have 19. Will 19 go into 3? Well, no. Will 19 go into 34? Well, the answer to that is yes. You do know that because 34 is bigger than 19, right? But you want to kind of figure out, if you're not quite sure how many times, you need to kind of think about how do these numbers fit together. So, what you should be thinking in your head is, 19 is close to what number? Well, you should say 20, right? 19 is close to 20. Um, and how many 20s would go into 34? Well, just one, right? Because 20 times 2 would be 40, and that's too big. So, we're going to start with 1, okay? So 1 times 19 is 19. I'm going to subtract. Well, I can't take 9 from 4, so I'm going to have to regroup here. Okay, and then 14 minus 9 is 5. 2 minus 1 is 1. Now I need to check. 
Is 15 smaller than 19? Yes. Okay, I can keep going. I'm going to bring down this 6. Now here's another one. So now I need to look at how many times will 19 go into 156? Well, this is where I need to also use some number signs here. So we just said 19 is close to 20, right? So how many 20s are in 156? So count by 20, um, you would say 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. So there's five 20s in 100. So then we have 120, 140, that's 7, 160, oop, that's too many. So 7 times, right? So 7 times 9, I'm going to write a 3 and carry my 6 right here. And then 7 times 1 is 7, plus 6 is 13. Okay, and I'm going to subtract. 6 minus 3 is 3, 5 minus 3 is 2. Uh-oh, what happened? 7 isn't big enough. How did that happen? Well, what happens is sometimes when you have a number like 19, which is very close to 20, and then you have a number like 156, which is very close to 160, and you do your um, rounding, your estimating, to figure out how many times it will divide into that number, um, it's so close when you do the rounding that you might have to go up one or, or down one, okay? So that seven gets us super close, but it's not quite there. So what we're gonna do now is just back up, okay? So I'm going to erase this. So 7 didn't work because 23 is too big. I'm going to back that up, right? And I'm going to back up and I'm going to go to 8, okay? So simple as that. If it doesn't work, you just go to the next number or down to the next number, okay? So 8 times 9 is 72. Carry the 7. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 7 is 15. And I subtract, I'm going to get 4. Well, 4 is definitely smaller than 19. I'm going to get rid of that 7 now. And I can bring down this 9. And now, will 19 go into 49? Yes. So again, 19 is close to 20. 20 times 2 is 40. So it's going to be twice. So 2 times 9 is 18. I'm going to regroup that one. 2 times 1 is 2. Plus 1 is 3. When I subtract, I get 11. 11 is smaller than 19. I am done. My answer is 182, remainder 11. In sixth grade, we do like to write those as fractions. So my final answer, um, a lot of times I would have you write it as 182 and 11 nineteenths um, for your answer. Okay? So there you go. That was a little bit harder of a long division problem, and we did use some number sense to solve that one. Okay? So again, this is what we call standard algorithm. Um, and uh, this is what algorithm your parents will be familiar with when you say I did long division this is what they know to do this is the process okay um, you got to keep your work nice and neat um, you also need to be able to do the checks at the end so if I take 5 times 109 over here I'll get 545, that checks out, okay? So if you take your quotient and your divisor and multiply it together, you um, should get your dividend, and that is how you check your work. And like over here, if you take 182 times 19 and then add 11, you will get 3,469. That is how you check your work. So um, those notes will be in the Google slide too, so that's how you do your check, okay? So that's standard algorithm method. All right, the next method that we're going to talk about is called area model. Okay, guys, so this is what we call division with area model. So it is kind of easy, um, and it is kind of just showing you how to break these numbers apart. Um, and so if you have trouble with that long division, like all the, the process, um, how it can kind of go on a bit. And if you get lost in there or you have trouble keeping your work neat, this might be a method that might work better for you. Um, so I'm just going to switch to red here and go over like what this is actually showing. So the problem here is 295 
divided by five, okay? And so what they want us to do here is you have three boxes, okay? So what they're showing, um, I'm going to go off to the side and, and do it here. So 295 divided by 5. Um, what they're saying is you have 295 and you're going to write that in the first box. 295, okay? And you need to think about 5 and what number um, times 5 will give you something equal to a number less than 295, okay? So in this case, they're saying 50. And you can do that pretty easily in your head. So when you're thinking area model, you're thinking of multiples of like tens, hundreds, um, 25s, uh, like quarters, fives, that kind of thing. Like numbers that you can do easily in your head. And you can easily multiply five times 50 in your head because five times five is 25. And then you just put your zero on the end, right? So that's where that 250 is coming from. So the 50 goes at the top. And so you would say 50 times five is 250. And then we do a subtraction, okay? So five minus zero is five. Nine minus five is four. So we're left with 45 here, okay? So then this 45 then goes to the top of the next box and kind of becomes the next dividend, okay? So then you're thinking to yourself, what times five can give me 45, okay? Now they went with five. Now anybody that kind of knows their multiplication facts would just jump to nine here. So I'm gonna jump to nine. And I'm gonna say nine times five is 45. I'm gonna subtract, I get zero. So you get the answer here by adding 50 plus nine equals 59. So the answer to this problem is 59, okay? And if we did the problem, um, with the standard algorithm method of long division, we would say 295 divided by 5. 5 goes into um, 29 5 times. 5 times 5 is 25. I would subtract. I would get 4. I would bring down my 5. 5 goes into 45 9 times. 9 times 5 is 45. I get 0. So the answer is 59. Okay. Um, so that is how you would use the area model to solve that. Okay, so you're not really memorizing the steps. You're thinking of number sense. You're kind of breaking up this 295 into numbers that are friendly to five and multiplied by five um, and then just narrowing it down until you get a final answer. Okay, so that's area model. Um, we can look at the one on the bottom here. So I'm going to erase this. Um, that was kind of longer. I'll go through. Um, there's another one in your uh, Google slide um, presentation uh, that I'll put in here to kind of give you an idea of what that looks like. So I'm going to go to the next slide and I'll get and I'll do that one so you can kind of see what it looks like um, with a bigger problem. So that problem looks like this. 4,596 divided by 65, okay? So what we need to do now is we're going to start with the boxes, okay? And I'm going to leave that open, and I'm going to say 4,596 here, and I'm going to put 65 here, okay? And I'm going to say to myself, what times 65 will be less than 4,596? Well, when I think of these numbers, 65 times 100, right, is going to be 6,500. That's too big, right? Um, it's too much. We don't need that much. We could use half of that, right? So times 50 would work. Um we could also say times 10. If we did times 10, it would be 650. So we could do that very easily. So I'm going to start there because I think most kids 
would get that times 10. So I'm going to put a 10 here. I'm not, I'm not going to go to light blue. Okay. So 10 times 600 or times 65 is 650. And I'm going to subtract 6 minus 0 is 6. 9 minus 5 is 4. 9, 3. So Matt, now this 3,946 becomes my new dividend, right? And then I'm going to say to myself, can I use 650 again? For sure, okay? Um, could I even double it this time now that I'm a little more comfortable with that? Yeah, 650 doubled is 1,300, right? And 10 doubled is 20. So now it's going to be 20. So 20 times 65 is 1,300, Okay, and I'm going to subtract. 6 minus 0 is 6. 4 minus 0 is 4. 9 minus 3 is 6. 3 minus 1 is 2. Okay. Okay, now stay with me here on this one because this one was with a 10, right? This is with 20. Now, 26, 46, 2,646. Now, if I look at 1,300, if I double 1,300, I get 2,600. If I double 20, then I would have to double 20 to get 40, okay? So that this is becoming easier for me now. So now I take 40 times 65. See how that number sense kind of kicked in there with those friendly numbers? So this 26, 46 goes here. Now 40 times 65 is 2,600. When I subtract this, I'm going to get 46, right? And will 65 go into 46? The answer is no, right? So that 46 is your remainder, okay? So that is the remainder. So your answer now, we have to take 10 plus 20 plus 40, Right, and we're gonna get 70, remainder 46 for our answer, okay? Or you could say 70 and 46 60 fifths, okay? So that's how you solve that one with an area model. Um, there is another method. The other method is called partial quotient method. It is super similar to what I just showed you with the area model, except it's all done on the side. Um, there is a video in the Google slide on this last slide of it um, from a guy that teaches um, math for um, a corporation, I think. Anyway, his video is, is really good and it's quick. It's only two minutes. Um, and he's the one that first got me interested in these alternative methods. Um, if you don't like par the partial quotient method or the um, area model method, you don't have to use it. Um, you might see some questions like that on some tests, uh, so I wanted to expose you to it. But I do have some kids every year, at least five or six every year in all of my classes that prefer this method to the standard algorithm. Um, and they like to go home and teach it to their parents. So I always teach it just in case there are a few kids that prefer it because Really, I always say, I don't care how you do your work. I don't care what method you use as long as you show me your work and I can follow it um, just in case you make some mistakes and I can then I can see where I, you need help, okay? So those are three methods um, to help you learn how to do long division. It really does just take extra practice and um, number sense, and you will build a lot of that this year in sixth grade. Okay, thanks for watching. I hope you learned something.